Hi everyone, whether you're someone like me who likes maths or maybe somebody who finds maths a little bit tricky, there will be some marks on your chemistry exam that involve some basic math skills. So if we can get to grips with those skills, then it will help us get a few more marks and that could push you into the next grade above. Calculating a mean is quite a simple skill, but very often candidates only get one out of two marks on a question involving this. So let's look at a set of results. We've got a time taken for a reaction. We've done it four times and we're asked to calculate the mean. So the first thing we must do is identify the anomaly, especially if it's a two mark question. So straight away, we can see that 26 doesn't fit the rest of the pattern. So we'll circle that. And then we're going to use the three good results that we're left with. So we would do 17, add 16, add 19, actually press equals on your calculator. And then because we've got three good results that we're using, we're going to divide that answer by three and we get 17.3. And we have to make sure we put it in the answer box. Now, if you did include all four results and added them up and divided by four, you'd still get one mark, but it's really important you get both marks. So do look out for that anomaly and make sure you don't include it in your calculation. If you're asked to draw a graph on your exam, it could be worth up to five marks and that could make a massive difference to your overall grade. So first of all, we label the X axis along the bottom with the numbers and they need to go along in equal amounts, either 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 going along in tens, or you may go along in fifties or hundreds, for example. You need to do a title for that axis describing what it's showing and the unit and all of that would get you one mark. Similarly, going up the side, the y-axis also needs the numbers, equally spaced, title and units. And then for plotting the points, there's up to two marks for that. And you need to try and work to the nearest half a small square. Be as accurate as you can. Use a cross rather than a dot and use a sharp pencil so the examiner can see exactly where you're putting that point. And then your last mark on drawing a graph is for drawing a line of best fit. And I'm going to remind you here of the common lines of best fit that we come across in chemistry. Often get a straight line up, straight line down, a curve upwards or a curve downwards. On your exam, you could also be asked to read off from a graph. For example, we've got a graph here of temperature along the X axis and the time taken for the reaction to finish on the Y axis. And the question could be, how long would the reaction take at 43 degrees Celsius? So at this point, you physically get your ruler out and draw a line on the graph that's on your exam paper. So I'm going to draw a line up from 43 degrees until it hits the curve. Now, your graph paper will have the smaller squares on as well, which will make it easier for you. And then I'm going to draw another line with the ruler going across until it intercepts the Y axis. And we've noticing that the interval going up the Y axis is different. It's going up in 20s this time. So I'm going to estimate that where that hits the Y axis, it is 28 seconds. And that would be my answer. Sometimes you're asked to read off a graph going in the opposite direction. So the question could be what temperature would be needed to get the reaction to finish after 50 seconds. So this time we're going to draw a line across from 50 seconds until it hits the graph and then another line down once again with the ruler until it hits the X axis. And this time that looks like 34 degrees C by reading off the X axis. A very common question on your exam is describing trends on graphs, and that can be for up to two or three marks. So here's a graph of time on the X axis and the volume of gas made on the Y axis. So if I simply wrote as time progresses or increases, the volume of gas increases, that would only get me one mark. So to get the higher level of marks, I need to recognize, first of all, that this is a three part graph. The graph has three sections to it. So this time I would say as time progresses or increases, the volume increases rapidly at first. It's quite a steep section of the graph, that first section. Then we can say the volume of gas increases, but more slowly, but it's still increasing. And then the third section of the graph, we can say finally, the volume of gas stays the same. 
Here's another example of describing a graph. This time the graph is downward sloping. So like before, if we just wrote as temperature increases, the time taken decreases, that would only get us one mark. So we need to describe it in more detail for the two or three marks. So instead we could say as the temperature increases, the time decreases rapidly at first. Then time decreases more slowly. And finally, the time stays the same when it reaches a certain point. And it's even better if you can put some numbers on that. So you could say the time stays the same once it reaches a certain temperature, for example. At this point, I'm going to mention a special case, and that's when we have a straight line graph that passes through the origin where the X and Y axis meet. And in this case, it's a graph of the mass of magnesium added and the temperature change from the reaction. So in this case, because it is a straight line and it is going through the origin, we can say the mass of magnesium added and temperature change are directly proportional. Another skill you may be asked to do is calculating a gradient from a graph. So the first thing we do is we make a triangle based on the graph and we have to calculate the side going up the triangle, what I call the rise. So we work that out from the graph. We also work out how long it's gone across the bottom, so the run, and the gradient is the rise divided by the run. Now I'll put a link up here to a previous video where I go into calculating gradients in much more detail, including how you calculate a gradient if the graph happens to be a curve rather than a straight line. One of the math skills that not many candidates got right last year was calculating the uncertainty. And the uncertainty is the range divided by two. So for example, the question might say, calculate the uncertainty of these final temperatures. And we've got 23 degrees, 20 degrees, 24 degrees, and 26 degrees. So first of all, the range is the highest take away the lowest. So that is six degrees. And then we simply divide it by two. So the uncertainty is six divided by two, which is three degrees. Finally, I want to give you some help on working out the units so that when you've done all the hard work of working out a calculation, you're getting that extra mark for writing the correct unit. Now, you could simply learn all the units that you might ever come across, but there is actually a logical way of working it out. So when you're multiplying two numbers together, for example, taking an example from physics, what are the units for moments, the turning force? A moment is the force times the distance. Now we know that force is measured in newtons, n, and distance is measured in meters. So when you times in two units together like this, you simply put them side by side. So the unit for the moment is newton meters, nm. Now to work out the units when you're dividing numbers, Let's have a look at an example. What are the units for the rate of reaction? So one way of working out the rate of reaction is it's the amount of product made. So that would be measured in centimeters cubed if it's a gas, and it's divided by the time, which would be in seconds. So if we think about the units, we've got a centimeters cubed divided by an S. So that becomes cm cubed slash S. Think about the dividing line becoming the slash of the units. Let's look at one more example which involves dividing numbers. So another way of working out the rate of reaction is the amount of reactant used, and that could be in grams, divided by the time, which is in seconds. So if we think about the units, we've got grams above seconds, G over S, so that becomes G slash S grams per second. So once again, the dividing line becomes the slash of the units. If you found the video useful, please give it a like, and that will mean it can reach more people who may also find it useful. Thank you for watching.